If you use AI tools doing your thesis or dissertation work, are you cheating? This question comes from a comment that Emma recently left on one of my videos and the comment reads, I've been on the fence about this. I realize now those tools could have helped me with my thesis last year, but I was worried about the ethics around AI tools. I felt I was cheating the process. And listen, Emma, thank you so much for that comment. Once I read that comment, I knew I had to make this video. I'd already been preparing to make some videos around AI tools and how they can help you be more efficient. But when I saw this, I wanted to address it. Is it cheating if you're using AI tools in your master's or PhD work? Well, the short answer to that, of course, is no. Um, however, because of the hype around specifically generative AI tools and how they can give us answers quickly once we put a prompt into it. There has been a lot of hype around, oh, well, if you use it to write, then it's cheating. If you use it for that, then it's, you know, it's unethical. And definitely there are unethical ways to use AI. Um, but that's not the topic of this video. In this video, my goal is to talk about two things, right? First of all, is to talk about the fact that I know there has been a lot of conversation around AI tools for writing specifically, so writing the actual thesis or writing the actual dissertation, right? There's a lot of conversation around gen AI writing tools, but you can use generative AI tools for more than just writing. I'm going to talk about that. Then secondly, I want to address the fact that using AI tools to help you note the word I use to help you is not cheating. It is when you go and use content directly from an AI tool, you use the direct input. This is where you begin to encounter problems. And I'm going to discuss what those problems are as well. So I said AI can help you do more than write. And I wish that this tool had, had come around when I was doing my PhD. So good for all of you, right? One of the things that we used to have to do the lengthy way back in the Stone Age was read a lot of papers and try to summarize them ourselves. You'd have to read the paper and summarize it yourself. However, these days, a lot of AI tools will allow you to upload a PDF of a paper and it will read the paper for you and spit out a summary, right? And so I think that for the purpose of literature review, AI can be extremely helpful here where it cuts down the time where you would be sitting down trying to read through all these papers in order to maybe um, come up with a research question or find where the gaps are so that you could design a research project around that. And so I think that for literature review purposes, AI is wonderful and you should be using it for that if you aren't already. A tool I found that I think is really great at this is size space. If you have other tools, you can mention them in the comments as well. I found size space to be especially great for this, where it will summarize papers for you, or you can actually ask size space questions around a specific topic, and it will retrieve from its database papers that are related to that particular subject, right? I think that this, and you couldn't, not that you couldn't do this, you, you, you were able to do this somewhat with Google Scholar, but it wasn't as as tailored it wasn't as you know as intuitive and and as direct right and so these ai tools are helping us look for papers quicker they're helping us summarize papers quicker they're helping us do literature reviews quicker using it this way is definitely not cheating it's simply again it's simply a tool to help you cut down some of that work However, what I will say is that if you are using these tools for literature review, it is still your job. And you'll find that I say this, I repeat this multiple times in the video, perhaps. It is still your job to go back and double check and cross check and triple check that things are correct, right? And the same if you were using it for writing, for actual writing. So the way that I personally use AI tools with my writing, right? And I write LinkedIn posts, I write my scientific documents, and I write fiction as well, okay? Now, the way I use AI in each of these modes of writing is I use it as a tool to help me um, maybe generate the first sentence, uh, help me generate a catchy sentence, help me say this in a better way, right? And so. 
you can use it in, in, in those ways. You wouldn't necessarily use a Gen AI to, to write your whole thesis or write your whole dissertation. I think that's where you begin to run into problems. And actually, I believe there was this case whereby somebody had written some law court briefs with, with ChatGPT and they got into a lot of trouble because right chat gpt hallucinates and made up cases and it, there was a lot wrong with that and so you don't want to look incompetent right you want to make sure that if you are using these tools to help you again the, the operative word here is help you then you're going back and double triple checking another way that i absolutely love to use ai and I, again this is why i wish ai these gen ai tools were around when i was in graduate school is to simplify difficult concepts. So one of the ways that I remember things is to break that topic down into its barest bones, into its most basic form, because if I don't understand it at that very, very basic level, trust me, I cannot understand it. It's really difficult for me to understand if I don't understand at that very basic level. So I remember there was this uh, topic in psychology I was once studying for my own purposes and the terms were new to me so i went into chat gpt and i said i want to learn about this topic but i'm having a really hard time understanding explain it to me like a fifth grader and it did that and once it did that and i went back and i was reading the papers it made a lot of sense right so what you can do is use chat gpt or use any other of these gen ai tools to help you understand a concept at a level that you think is lower than where you are right now for me it was like a fifth or sixth grade level once i understand it at that level then everything else that is complex makes sense because I can build upon that foundation right a lot of the time I think what we do and I don't know what I did was I'd be building up here in the sky right all these difficult concepts and I wouldn't have the basic understanding and that hurt me a lot because I'd go into like <laughs> I'd go into research reviews and Sometimes I get asked a question and I'm blanking because like I understand it at the high level, but I haven't understood the roots, right? So this is another great way to use AI to help you in your thesis or dissertation work. If you've watched this video to this point, why haven't you liked this video? Please like this video. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and getting it in front of other people just like you who may need these videos. Grammar or style enhancement AI tools have been doing this for a while. Actually, we've had tools like Grammarly. Um, there's another one that I used to use on my computer. I forget now, but Hemingway recently also has AI tools to help you. So you can use these to improve your writing and your language, right? Not necessarily write, but you wrote something and you're putting it in these tools to help you catch spelling errors, catch gram grammar errors, catch errors that you don't want to make in a final product, for instance, right? And so you can use it for that purpose too. I also love the fact that there are AI tools now that can help you to analyze and visualize data. And some of those uh, tools are even on the instruments if you work in the life, in the life sciences. I always talk from the perspective of a life scientist because that's my training, so forgive me. But as a life scientist, I know that there are machine learning tools um, artificial intelligence tools that are being incorporated into lab instruments and so um, for instance you know you can take an image we used to be able to you could use a confocal I don't know if the confocal people are doing this but you would take an image of a, a slide right of a cell of a section of a cell and these tools can help you analyze specific parameters that you want to measure and so instead of going and manually doing this stuff now you have these tools to help you predict and make these measurements you know with the touch of a button you know hopefully but usually right and so again these tools are meant to help us to remove a repetitive task or task that used to involve so much brain power to do and when you're using it this way it's not unethical if you're learning any coding tools right um, any bioinformatic tools AI could also be really really helpful in this arena but the reason that you, you want to avoid using AI tools to actually write your thesis to write the whole thing and then like write it and then submit it is because of three big things number one is plagiarism 
right? Because these tools are trained on publicly available data and sometimes questionably, some there have been some companies that are beginning to, to sue some of these companies because they claim they are using information, proprietary information, so that there's there's if there's that, you don't want to get caught up in that. But you don't want to plagiarize. You don't want the AI to essentially pick up a whole paragraph from something that already exists and then put it in your thesis. You don't want that to happen. So what you want to do again is go back, right? So you want to ab avoid plagiarism. There's also reports of bias, right? A lot of these tools have been trained on specific data sets that may be more available in certain parts of the world. So if you haven't collected a whole lot of data from a certain part of the world and there's more data in one part of the world then the data that has been fed to these ai tools is very specific to that area of the world which can result in bias which can result in you saying things or, or it generating an output that doesn't apply it's not completely true and can be even hurtful right and so there's that and then you have of course hallucination and incorrect information that is just made up information so for these reasons you definitely want to avoid using an a gen ai tool to generate your whole thesis or generate your whole dissertation i know that there are videos even from popular um, um creators that talk about um, how to pass the um, plagiarism checker right using AI and you know I'm always I don't know maybe I'm old school maybe I'm just I, trad I just think too traditionally but I think that that shouldn't be the goal the goal should be that these tools help you right it shouldn't be that I'm just gonna outsource everything to an AI to write for me and I don't care what it looks like. You know, you're just gonna run into problems with that. And in line with what I'm talking about in this video, there was a recent article in Nature where a group in Japan had uh, developed an AI machine learning tool. And, and I know that those terms are not the same thing, okay? I'm just using them, I'm just using them as a novice, okay? Just forgive me, all right? But they had come up with this tool that they called the AI scientists that did everything from coming up with research questions to coming up with designing the experiments to coming up with writing and even reviewing the papers and they, they made a comment in there that I agree with which is you know a lot of the repetitive tasks within within the scientific world could be uh, taken over by AI and I think it's some of it is already happening not necessarily in the lab right because I I work on an R&D team. My work is not in the lab, but the, the rest of my, my, my team, uh, they, they work in a lab and they still have to go to the lab, okay? So even though there's a lot of automation happening, right, we cannot just leave everything to the machines, right? These scientists still have to go, they still have to make sure the parameters are in right, they still have to make sure that the outputs are what we're looking for, they still have to, you know, judge if the thing failed or didn't fail, if what they wanted is what they got or didn't get. So there is still a lot of human involvement. This is, AI is not an excuse for us to send our brains on vacation, okay? That's a bar, you can put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> So I hope this was helpful. Using AI tools to help you with your thesis or dissertation work and not just writing, right, but the whole experience because there's even AI helping you with jobs and doing things like generating interview questions or helping you write your resume or cover letter. Using it in this sense is not unethical. It's not cheating. It's just another way to help you do your work more efficiently.